I'm Kevin Hill. And today we're gonna to do a very different kind of seascape. We're gonna focus on the ocean and the foreground and maybe leave out the sky altogether. And of course, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to subscribe and leave a like for future painting videos. Let's get started. We'll start off today with just a little bit of blue and red, mostly blue. All right, let's come, let's come over here to the, to the top and, and just start throwing in some color. Now, we need to really begin to think very quickly about what we want to do here. I'm going to touch into a little bit of green and a little bit of white. Green and white. This will, this will give us more of a Pacific Coast color. Not so deep blue. A little bit of that green in there. A little bit of the brown is always good too. All right. <laughs> nice. Now, I know this is absolutely crazy, but I think we've done this one time before where we just do the where we just do the ocean so kind of take a couple extra minutes and make sure you got your mind wrapped around what you want to do here because it can get a little bit confusing so anyways we're just going to put in a very soft background and I do have this canvas coated with a little bit of clear gel and white and that's available it's available on our website and you can go check it out it really does help it sort of is, feels to me just a little bit stickier than a traditional linseed oil base that you might normally use. Next, I'll load up our little filbert brush here with a, a nice green color made from a little brown, green, blue, and white. So now, right up here, let's, let's sort of begin thinking about some of this ocean green color we wanna work in a little stronger. Now, obviously, as you can see here, I have been sketching with a little bit of white paint. And this is good because, see, we're starting to develop the shape of the wave. So I've got a kind of a wave that's already crashed, one that's actually curling. And it's always getting smaller as it goes back. We're, we're looking at a lot of distance here. And if you don't follow the perspective rules very carefully, it's going to look super weird. And <laughs> what I mean is things must get smaller and they have to get smaller pretty quick as you go back. Especially, we may even want to cut this little guy down a little just a bit. Okay, there we go. I also marked, I don't know if you can see that or not, I marked the halfway point because that helped me to drop the elements in in the correct spot. There. And I'm just going around placing this where I think I need it. Don't overdo, just, just a bit. And we're going to highlight and so a lot of the sea green is going to get covered up. There, always following the way you want your waves to be angled. Next, with a soft blue-gray color, I'm going to brush in a couple of rocks up here. There. Okay, now, these rocks are there to... I think they sort of break up the water and the tide so it doesn't wash away the beach. They have these big old boulders sitting around from you know, in different areas, so. They're very interesting to paint. They got a lot of light and dark in them. All right. And I don't want much. Just enough to indicate them. And we'll throw just a touch of highlight on them as well. Don't go pure black, though. But I do want them fairly dark. There, a little bit of that blue kind of gives you some atmosphere. Nice. Next, I'll find a nice little sandy color here, a little bit of yellow, white, touch of brown. Makes a good sand color. And let's begin working on the, the not-so-wet portion of the sand. Over here, I did a dark brown because that area is wet. All right, there we go. I'm just going to scrub this in until it meets the other colors and let them sort of blend together. I want a soft transition there but I don't want like a super faded transition. I do want to be able to see where that outline is. I just don't want it hard. There. Nice. Next, I'm just gonna brush in a nice little sand dune right here. And I've gotta explain what's going on here. You see, we're on this sand dune looking down onto the ocean and back up. This is quite a, a drop down here, maybe about 15, 20 feet from here down to the ocean. So that's why we have this crazy perspective, which I really think is cool. Every once in a while to do something like this. Now this sand dune is kind of on top of rocks, just like the ones we painted up there. 
So that kind of gives you an idea of what's going on here. Next, with a nice soft blue on a little detail round brush, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in some details. Now you could obviously use the three quarter brush and it's probably be a lot faster, but the reason I'm not doing it is I want smaller effects. That three quarter brush would be perfect if you're doing something just a little bit bigger, but we're not. This wave is far away and it's very important that you keep it that way. If you get these effects large, like you would if a, you know, with a normal seascape, it's gonna look just totally weird. <laughs> and it really, it's, it, you would not think it's such a big deal, but it is. So I want you to be careful. Make sure, no matter what brush you're using, make sure you get really small effects in here. Tiny, tiny effects. There. But it's the same idea as a big seascape, just far away. There. See, this thing rolls just like this. I love it. And in just a second, I'll show you how to put some other colors, maybe a brighter color on or something like that. Now with just a little bit of white on the detail round, I'm going to work on, well, work on this wave back here. I'm gonna probably do all the waves, but it's all done the same exact way. Just, I'm just carefully rubbing with this brush. Again, this three quarter would do the same thing, just larger. All right, now, I really wanna to talk to you about where this painting came from, because this is super, super exciting. This is a real place, went there a couple weeks ago. It's Ventura Beach and it's just amazing, really pretty. And this is a real photo. Sophie took this photo and, and I decided to paint it because it was perfect. I'm really not editing it at all. Normally I combine several photos to make one new painting for you guys, but this one I'm leaving pretty much exactly alone. There, it's just, it was already just had a great balance and a great feel, so. There you go. The light was really low when we were there. It was pretty early. And it's just made for a great little painting. Next, I'll load up our three quarter brush here with a little bit of black, blue, and green. And right over here, we're actually going to, all right, we're actually gonna throw in these very, very interesting plants. And maybe we need to go, we need to go almost to about halfway with these, so. There. Okay, <laughs> pretty fun. These are like a, a succulent, similar to like a cactus or something. And they have these beautiful, beautiful flowers. And they grow all over the sand dunes. There. And they're just really neat. A lot of contrast, very, very pretty. They're bright green. And they have the wonderful little yellow flowers. And there's tons of it, so it's kind of why I left this area a little bit unfinished. There. This three quarter brush is just perfect. It gives you a little pointy top and that's exactly the way they look. Nice. Now with our detail round, I'm gonna add in a lot of little petals to these flowers. And I quickly dropped in the flowers, a little bit of red, yellow, and white. Now, some of these areas here are very dark. I had to go over those a second time and I had to glob the paint on a little bit thicker in order for them to be that dark. Now, when you paint these flowers, I had to do a little bit of experimenting to figure out how much paint needed to be removed, but I had to wipe down where you want the flowers. If you, if you don't wipe it down, it'll just become green. Very, very green. So we don't want that. There. And these petals should be pretty much just white. White with a little bit of yellow, because that's really the color that they are. They kind of are white at the tips, and then yellow down toward the base. It's a really cool flower. They're not very big, but oh, I love it. And I like this composition. I worked a little on the composition so it eye flows a little better. There. Just a little bit on this guy back here. There. If you begin to get green in your brush, just wipe it out. Don't continue with it. Over here, this one looks really wet. We'll have to, there, we'll have to be extra careful with that one. There we go. Just a matter of planning out your strokes and it'll all be fine. Just be a little bit little bit extra careful. We're getting to where we have a lot of paint down. Now with our detail brush, I'm going to work on some of the very subtle areas here. Maybe make this area brighter. Make this a little bit more foamy, but not a whole lot. You see, we're just, we got the canvas covered and everything's pretty much built in. 
So now all we have to do is refine the detail areas and make, make them exactly the way that we want them to be. Now, even though, even though this is like a vast scene and something that's kind of unusual, we still need to concentrate the light in the center. It's still a painting and we still want to, to have those same thoughts about keeping the light in the middle and creating an effective painting because it's not the same thing as a photo. They're different. You have to treat them differently. So what works in a photo may not necessarily work in a painting. There. And we're going to come back and highlight some of the plants down here, but maybe we'll even throw some rocks on the beach. I think that's pretty. There were a few rocks that day. In fact, as I recall, this was low tide. There were tons of seashells on the beach. It was just the coolest thing. I love looking for the seashells on the beach. It's always fun. There. Put a little bit out here. Now, the more you do this, the more it's going to pick up the the color underneath. So what I suggest you do is wipe down everything with a paper towel. You don't have to smudge it, just kind of gently use your thumb and the paper towel and go with the area. So you wouldn't smudge it this way. You take the paper towel and you smudge it this way. That way it won't drag the foam into the sand or the sand into the foam. But you still wipe off the extra oil. And that makes it so much easier to have a beautiful, beautiful highlight. There, don't thin the paint down. Just remove the extra paint that you don't need. It's causing you problems. Next, with our little filbert brush here, I am going to just scrub in lightly some sand here. Now, the light was low and coming across something like this, so we will have little cast shadows every once in a while. I won't worry about those until later. There, now, what you have to do here, and it might be even better if you hold the brush upside down, I need you to really lightly, lightly scrub so that you get a little bit of the tooth of the canvas to show. And this is possible even over a wet paint if you have this underpainting extremely, extremely thin, not runny, but barely any on there. There. And if you don't get this texture like I'm getting, it might be because you, your underpainting is too thick or it could be because you're pushing a little too hard and you're filling the holes in or or you may not have enough paint in the brush. It takes a little bit to, to do this. So over here you're not going to get as much control. I'm not worried about that. I'm just this big area. I want this to really really stand out. There. And obviously this is sand so it's fairly smooth but these little textures in here are just really nice. There. And this is a sand dune so lots of beautiful angles and shapes. There, see, it's mixing a bit, but I'm not going to worry about it. It gets darker here as it comes down anyways. Now we'll carefully just dot on a couple of rocks here with the detail brush. It's very important that you don't go too dark. <laughs> I know the temptation is to simply go in there with black or something. Don't do that. Because if you do, it'll look way too close. So I have like a mid-tone gray. There. Now with our three-quarter brush, Let's drop in some highlight here. Now we're not going to need too much, but I don't want them to be flat, so. There, we'll just spend a few minutes making them a little more 3D. And obviously some overlap, and that's great. So you want to make sure you get all of that in there. And if you go over the petals of your flowers, like I'm about to do right here, no worries. Just paint them back in if you want the flower over the little plant. It's up to you. Or you can move the plants in front of the flower, then you just leave it the way it is. Just make sure you don't get these too vivid yellow. Although there is some yellow hint in it, just a little hint of yellow. And they're very much just kind of green and white. There. And also, they're very, um, very square, very sharp angled. So it's almost like a building. That's how how sharp the light is on them. That gives you an idea. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching. <music>